1970, I moved from London to LA, which was a shock. And between 70 and 76, I worked there as a photographer. And in 1976, I moved to New York. I actually love the city more now even than I did back then. It has a, a real sense of power, this city. It has a great sense of discipline. As John Lennon said, the center of the world. I still think it is to a great degree. My focus initially was advertising and editorial work, but then slowly but surely, I became much more interested in the fine art aspect. I'm always looking for a shot that could end up in a gallery, a book, and even a museum. Something special, something iconic. Today is no different. So here I am in one of my favorite studios in New York, uh, Dune Studios, and uh, of course uh, I have high expectations of today. I'm working with Sergei Polunin. He's really one of the great dancers of all time. He's one of the most disciplined people that I've ever met in my life. He's very special. Morning, Freddie. How, How are, are you? Good buddy. to see you. Good to see you. How are you. I'm always working with the best makeup, the best hair, the best stylist. It's essential that you have a good team. Over here is the set, and today we're going to be shooting possibly against white and possibly against a dark canvas. Today I'm using Proforo Pro 10 packs. Actually, I've always used Proforo. It's more than 40 years now. Basically, you plug it in and it works. The plan today is to start with a portrait, and then I'll move on to some very high-energy mid-air shots. When the person arrives, there's a little bit of magic happens when you suddenly begin to feel the adrenaline. The person's on set, so you better start working. So the brain starts going quickly. And then you begin to make decisions about how this lighting should be done. I'm always starting with a key light. After I find that light, I begin a process of removing the light by using flags bit by bit by bit. It's basically like almost a jigsaw puzzle. You have to get the whole thing working, all the different components working together and finding the pieces that knit together. I'm looking for something strangely mysterious, something that has power with the lighting, and then I'm beginning to work with the subject. So it's very, very important that the two things are working together, the subject and the light. But there's a certain point that you fix this light, that light, this flag, that flag, this scrim, that scrim, and eventually you, you've got to be very careful. You've always got to remember there's a human being on the set. I become during the shoot very hands-on and physical with all elements on the set. If we need some spritzing on a face, I prefer to do that myself. It's much quicker and more efficient for me to do that than give direction to two or three assistants. He's a high energy dancer, so I'm doing a portrait, but I, I'm trying to introduce into the shot some power. Very good shot. Can you cover the light? I'm very familiar with the drawings of Michelangelo. I just spent my evening looking at five or six books that I have on his drawings, and I, I drew great inspiration from this. The ideal studio is in fact a black box. The reason for that is that when you add light, you want to be in total control of that light. Today I'm using a beauty dish and I, I actually like this source very much because it reminds me of tungsten light. And therefore there's a, a great opportunity here to add a theatricality to the shot. The two backlights are just simply cleaning the wall behind the subject. Take a half a stop off of the light, would you? Just the mouth open a tiny bit, not too much. Even as you look at me, think about a smile. You're one of these Ukrainian gangsters, you know? You always look at the face as a piece of geography, you know, it's a mountain range with some valleys and depth and so on. The cross lighting I think is good on him because it creates a shadow mood here. You don't need to see detail in here. I think this is a good start. I think it's a good portrait, it's strong. And now we're gonna move on and I'm gonna do some of Sergei and Midir. So the first thing we have to find out is uh, compositionally where he's going to be in the frame. You want to be tighter on him. And then after you work out the geometry, then you can begin to concentrate on the lighting. Wow. For this shot, I'm putting the beauty dish directly above him. And this will force him to move his head and shoulders back. 
it'll make the shot more dramatic and uh, more powerful. We want only the purity of the single light. There's only one sun, you know? Sergei, I love this. Wow, can you dance? The most important thing is to get the graphics and the geometry of the shot correct. Like, where are the hands going? Where is the body? How much bend? How much energy? And so on. The white floor is adding too much light, so I'm getting my assistants to just add black cloth here uh, to reduce that. All right, so let's try again, and then I, then I have to finally position the light. When you're photographing dancers, the timing is a crucial element because the real perfection only lasts for a 500th of a second. You've got to hit it right at the right point. One of the things I love about him is he is completely in control of his body. That comes from the fact that he started as a dancer when he was three years old. I think this is beautiful. Uh, you feel like an arrow from a bow or something, you know? Can we take the, the key light down half a stop? I mean, it's just elegant, powerful, it's muscular. It's like the Sistine Chapel we're doing there. You can only do a body position like that with a lot of training. <laughs> Slowly but surely, we're moving on to the next shot. And here I'm beginning to work with fabric. So like everything, you have to find the shot first and then we'll find the lighting. Wow. I'm using fabric in this shot, some chiffons. Uh, fabric's kind of in mid-air is unpredictable. There, there is something fabulous there. So there's a very nice sense of form here when you have a dancer who's really precise, but the fabric isn't precise. I really love these packs because they have tremendous stopping power and that means freezing an image and today that's what I need. I'm striving here to make these shots as graphically powerful as possible. A good shot should look good when it's small, from distance or close up. Beautiful. Yep. Feet are perfect. My God, the body is superb in this one. Yep, that'll do it. The jump is sublime. <laughs> right now here in makeup, are working on Sergei, and uh, I asked him to do a slightly powdery white makeup on him. Uh, so now we're doing it a little bit more theatrical than the previous shots uh, to let them think in a different direction. I'm using here a laurel wreath crown. It actually reminds me of the kind of thing they used to present to Greek athletes. So it, it's slightly retro, but uh, I think we'll try and shoot it in a modern way. head back a little bit more, a little bit more drama. Let's move the seam over to the middle there. Hold on, hold on, there. Let's see if it works. We started this, we were looking at uh, actually Caravaggio paintings as an inspiration. So we're not trying to copy the lighting in a Caravaggio, we're just trying to use it as inspiration as a general direction. Ah, there we go. That's perfect. Now is the shot, Sergey. So it's looking amazing. Just increase the power a little bit in the shoulders. It already looks wonderful. And then just in the face, a little bit of movement. The mouth open a little bit more. Of course, I still am wanting to end up with something quite dramatic that has quite a high contrast in it. And we have one light on the background just to give it a little bit of dimension. I think it's good. I think it looks mysterious and I think it uh, looks like what I was looking for. So I think it was, uh, it was pretty successful. Sergey, thank you. It was a great day. <laughs> Working today with Albert was a true inspiration. For me, he's a legend and you learn not just an art, you learn how humans should behave, you know, like a human approach to work. I don't know, you want to you wanna be in that, in that picture when you look at it. I think in life I've found uh, the right thing. I discovered photography fairly early on and it just felt really comfortable and natural for me. 
So it's been maybe 60 years now that I've had a touch with photography. And I'm so passionate about it to this day. After all these years, I still love working in the studio with lights. They can make the shot simple, they can make the shot dramatic, they can make the shot elegant, dynamic. After all, without light, you don't have a shot. <laughs>